Hare Krishna. My name is Rajma. Today I'm going to give a book review on Miracle on Second Avenue by Mukunda Goswami. This book talks about how the author joined the Hare Krishna movement, how he told his friends about it, how he got married in it, how he traveled to spread it, and his many course experiences with the swamp. This is a true story, even though some of the names were changed. Readers will see what the movement was like from Mukunda Goswami, what he experienced before it, and why he gave that up. This is a biography. It is casual and easy to understand. It is very humorous at points, and readers will be delighted to read those books. This book will be interesting for adults as well as children, and even after reading it many times, it still will be. Overall, it is a very amazing book. In part one, Mukunda Goswami met the Swami on 94 Bauli. This part of the book talks about how Mukunda Goswami st stopped taking drugs when he joined ISKCON and why. At first, he just wanted to read the Swami's books, but as he learned more about him, he became more involved and interested. His, gir his girl's friend, Jan, also became interested, and the two of them got married. Part one ends when Mukunda Goswami and Jan, now Janaki Dasi, left New York for San Francisco. Part two talks about the mantra rock dance and hate Ashbury and how Mukunda's friends, Sam and Melanie, joined ISKCON and were given the name Shamsunda and Malati and how they were married. It also talks about TV shows where Mukunda Goswami accompanied the Swami and in many other places where he did the same. In part two, there's also America's first Ratayatra, which Mukunda Goswami helped organize. Part two ends when Mukunda and Janaki, Yamuna and Guldas, and Shamsunga and Malati left San Francisco for Montreal and Montreal in London. Part three talks about when the three couples arrived in London they had almost no money or contacts, but gradually they became familiar with the Indian community of London and a few British people became devotees. The devotees also became friends with the Beatles, especially George Harrison, who helped them finding a temple and financing many things. The devotees made recordings at Apple and one of them had the biggest first day sale of any non beatle Apple recording. The devotees also found a nice temple, and the Swami, now known as Srila Prabhupada, was there for the deity installation. Part 3 ends with the installation. The epilogue talks about how ISKCON expanded, and that there are now many farms around the world protecting cows, and a center for Vaishnava studies at Oxford. The epilogue ends when Mukunda Goswami, now in Los Angeles, was called to the temple for an, an announcement. Rameshwara thus told everyone in the temple that Srila Prabhupada had left his world. As Mukunda Goswami was leaving the temple, Shamsundar called him asking about Prabhupada. Mukunda Goswami replied it was true. Even after his spiritual master left this world, Mukunda Goswami continued through his services, trying to please Prabhupada, determined. This book is about a determined person. He opened, or helped open, the New York, San Francisco, and London temples. He brought Krishna consciousness to San Francisco and London. Readers will see his struggles in doing so. Even after his spiritual master left, he continued, because he knew that was what Prabhupada would want him to do. I would recommend this book to anyone that would at all want to learn about ISKCON, how it started, Kunda Goswami or Prabhupada. I cannot call this book anything but excellent.